Ladies and gents, welcome back to day two of work on Arcana. A key feature of the human condition, right, is waking up in the morning, setting a day's to-do list. What? Just make it the way too goddamn warm. You can do, do this task, you gotta do this task, you gotta do this and this and this. You go about your day, you get halfway through the first task, and you go to bed feeling like shit. So how about for a change, I set the bar just right, just the right height, so that I can hit it. For once, that's what we're gonna be doing today, boys. Creating a ground editor. One task. We're gonna accomplish it. We're gonna get it done. We're gonna boot open four coder and we're gonna get to go. Damn, work. First things first is we're gonna go over to the UI.C class, find out where I was just working on yesterday. Entity editor. I am going to do that. And I'm gonna make this called the editor just so I can jump to it easy. Editor, editors, editors. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we've got the map editor right in here. Not entity editor, map editor, silly boy. And for those of you who didn't see the last vid or weren't here, this is what we did. All right, we can basically uh, go into the editor. This is the wrong editor, map editor. Okay, and we've got a little button here which places down a ground segment. And now our goal today is going to be creating some sort of editor, which lets us drag and drop them around, connect them together, and basically just create a big long thing of ground, essentially. I really need to fix up this editor because I'm I'm, I'm pressing the A key, right, to go left. And it's, and it's definitely not going left. I don't know about you boys, but right doesn't look very left to me. So let's fix that up. I have no idea why that's happening. Oh, uh, what would it even be? Uh, camera? Transform editor camera. Oh, uh, I think it's because the play is moving, actually. Might be it. Yeah, I think I remember it having some to do with that. All right, let's get to the bottom of this. Go to the player, pre-move update player. Um, if I straight up just disable all the moving, so it's just return straight away. If I disable the moving, is that gonna fix it? No, it still just goes in the opposite direction. Makes sense, definitely makes sense. I mean, all we gotta do is just flip this then, right? <laughs> I just don't know why it started going in the opposite direction there. Like, what did I do to make it do that? Like, instead of doing a plus equal, just go cheek little negative equal, and then plus equal on the other one, negative plus. Flip the signs around, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now it's moving in the right direction. Cool. Interesting. Anyway, it's in the rear view mirror. Who cares? So now that's fixed, let's go back into the UI. Into the cheeky little map editor over here. So this is going to be a general editor for like moving things around, placing shit down, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, this is going to be a general multi-purpose map editor. Uh, now the question is, how am I going to go about displaying the UI for the ground segments, right? Should they always just be strapping, right? Or should you maybe, once you click on it, then you can adjust? I, I don't know. Last time I did this, right? I put like little circles on here and then I could like drag and drag them around and change them. But that just looks ugly. So maybe after you've clicked it and selected it, uh, that's when we do it. So we're gonna have to store some run data on what's actually going down. So in the entity library, uh, we're not gonna be cheeky and use a static variable. Uh, where do I want to put this? Probably chuck it in run data. That's probably the best way. Editor, down here. What's, uh, what do we got? Editor state, debug flags, entity editor. Why do I have that there? Why have I broken that out into a struct? That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. What, for like readability maybe? Like, I mean, it's there. Selected entity, that's exactly what I want, right? But why has that been put out into a struct? Why would I not just write that in line like this, right? Selected entity, entity. Would that not be easier? Why overcomplicate things? Uh, I'm gonna comment this for the time being. What else we got? Chunk editor is selected chunk. We can get rid of this. We can comment this out. Goodbye. And that should compile. There we go. Awesome. All right, so we got ground segment. We can place that down. And now we have a selected entity. Oh, well, we have the data for it. We just gotta make it happen. So how are we gonna determine whether or not that little thing get selected? Excellent question. Uh, now, we've got like a very thin slice. Like all, all I've got is two positions here. There's that position and that position and then just get rendered as a, as a line. So how, how am I going to click on that? I'll have to like fatten it out a bit so that it looks like kind of like a buffer because that's way too thin to click on. Uh, where should I put that code? Like I could put it right here in the map editor. It's probably not the best idea. Where does that get rendered? That's probably where I should put it, right? It's a new entity gets created here. So that's me actually placing it down. I should probably put it where it gets rendered, which would be in collision.c and in just where we were before, the render colliders, the developer tools over here. Push debug shape, testing whether or not it's selected here. So what we could do, right, is just do a simple little click, little click test, cheeky little test. So I could go platform, as a key press, a left mouse pressed. If left mouse pressed, and then we can also test for entity. Do I have a function in util? Hmm. 
No. I need a way of uh, testing whether or not the mass is within the bounds of a shape. I swear I have some sort of function for that. Oh, look, it's right here. <laughs> I knew I did it before. I knew I've fucking done this before. Is mouse overlapping shape? It only works on uh, aligned axis bounding boxes at the moment. Though. We also want to make it work on lines because that's what we're doing right now. And so we're just going to make a little bit of lead way for lines. So if the mouse pos dot X, in fact, this should be renamed to is V2 overlapping shape because like, why would it just be mouse pos? Is V2 overlapping shape. All right, so if pos dot X greater than or equal to shape dot line dot T1 dot X and pos dot X is less than or equal to shape dot line dot P1 dot X. No, P2 dot X. Okay, then next up, do the Y. Pos dot Y is greater than or equal to shape dot line dot P1 dot Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pos dot Y less than line dot P2 dot Y. Uh, we can already just return that. And why is that a B32? Kind of cringe. You can tell this is old code. Well, Randy didn't know what he's doing. All right. And if all goes well, uh, that code should just work right off the bat. All right, well, it just crashed. So at least something's going right. Collision C 533. 533. Ah, it's hitting a default. It shouldn't be though. Oh, is it trying to collide with the player maybe? I think that's what's happening. Turn zero instead of breaking. Click. I have no way of telling whether that's been selected or not. Uh, we could print it. That's probably going to be the easiest way to do. Uh, it's, it's just straight up not selecting. Let's print the quads. You see, I could do that, but that's just such a bitch move, you know? Okay, fine. I'll print the quads. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. They are different signs. You've got a good point. Yeah. I don't know why I wasn't looking at that. Why the fuck are they different signs? What the fuck? Why? You see, a bunch of things seem to have just broken. For some reason, the camera position was just flipped. At what point did this change? I really need to take a serious look at my world chords. They are a bit fucky wucky. Yeah, that's that's made it right now. And there we have it. The selecting works. But why? Why was that all messed up to begin with? Like, at what point did my coordinates just like decide to shit themselves? Let's just ignore it, pretend the problem never existed, and continue on with our day. The next thing that we are going to accomplish actually being able to move around the little segments that we place in. So we can now select them. But once I select, I ought to be able to, you know, click and drag the bitch around. Global static sprite data at static sprite underscore circle, circle icon. Did that work? Nope. Is it static sprite data? Yeah, there we go. And we can get rid of you. You will now compile. Yay! Whether or not you work is a completely different story though. Ground segment, we select, we have an icon now, and um it just it just doesn't really do anything though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, cool. Hey, get in there, get in there, alright? Baby steps, boys, baby steps. So if it's not holding the middle, which it won't be, right off the bat, then we're gonna test for is V2 overlapping shape. We'll get mouse plus well position in space, get entity shape in middle space. If it is, then it's gonna tent. And if middle tent, we have that down here. It's not changing tent at all. Which, you know, is fine. I'll let it slide for now, all right? Entity shape in world space. Selected entity. Ah, there is a problem. There it is. Uh, we don't care about the entity shape. What we really care about, it's not the entity shape, but the middle bounds shape, which middle bounds is going to be uh, position offset to shape. All right, so we're going to get the shape type, which is, you know, C2, AABB, and the position, which is then going to be the selected entity position. And that should maybe work. I spell selected entity wrong? I did. That doesn't actually return the shape. Remember the truth, click, and the hover's still not working. Why? Change this to 10. Oh, it's let me drag it. So I guess it's a start. Why doesn't that change the tint? It's just the tint that's not working. Now I need to sponge that before. In fact, yeah, I need to sponge that right here. It is holding middle. That's when it should be at its darkest. Yeah, that works. And now that's just going to straight up work. Look at that. Seamless, easy. Oh, I could test for the center of the Y's actually. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. So we'll go, we'll meet it halfway. It's good work around for the time being. We're going to go uh, pause.y greater than or equal to this right here. It's going to be plus. How do I get the middle of this? I can work between the two. What's the best way to get the middle? Just plus and divided by two. So even when it's like this, I can go to the middle and I can click in the middle. Little workaround, cheeky little workaround. Now I technically can't click over here, but I can click in the middle and that will work for the time being, no matter what the orientation is. Sometimes boys, my, my genius just astounds me. All right, I think that's done.
I think we're done, boys. All right there is the ground editor, Mark 1. Hey, it feels good to actually get everything checked off the to-do list for once, you know? All right, boys, it's been real. Take care, boys. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.